Europe seems to be in shambles these days. In Spain, thousands of protesters took to Madrid's Plaza de Neptune to demonstrate against yet another round of controversial austerity measures. Just outside the parliament building, crowds chanted for government officials to step down. There were a number of tense standoffs between demonstrators and police, who formed a perimeter around the building, but eventually protesters poured into the square. Now, similar protests are going on in Greece, where demonstrations were a bit more violent. Police clashed with young protesters during a nationwide strike against austerity cuts. Protesters threw Molotov cocktails, smashed windows, started fires, and police shot tear gas and stun grenades to try to quell the demonstrations. And there were dozens of arrests. But the protests continue. We're talking about thousands of demonstrators here. The mainstream media here in the U.S. has been eating it up. Take a look. People came streaming out of here, riot police pulling in. The clash is occurring just across the street. Just another uh, austerity protest of a special kind. We saw protesters hurling gasoline bombs at the police. For now, Martha, it has quieted down, but the day is not over. No, it's not, and it's likely to happen again. Uh, so what about Spain, Amy? What's the latest there? Police fired rubber bullets and used batons to fight off the marchers. Spain has introduced austerity measures and economic reforms in a bid to convince its European partners and investors that it is serious about reducing its bloated deficit. So let me get this straight. Thousands of protesters taking to the streets. They're unhappy with the direction of their government. They're facing occasional clashes with police. Seems like an awful lot like the sort of discontent we saw with Occupy Wall Street. For some reason, the corporate media didn't react the same way when protesters here in the U.S. were upset about high unemployment and government corruption. What started as less than a dozen college students camping out in a park near the New York Stock Exchange is now hundreds of protesters, and it's spread to other cities. But what are they protesting? Nobody seems to know. This shows you what a slow news day this is, man. <laughs> to have you get on like that. We've got good ratings. We don't need this. And if I were you, I would be so embarrassed for your kid. So Back let me ask you, are you people yeah. nervous down there? Are they, they like when they're holding their martinis and then, and you know, are they like, how Joe, nervous Joe, are they? Joe. First of all, it's like, way too early for martinis. Are there top hats you, even and, for me, even and their for monocles? Who are you? Does the ascot askew? Like, how, are how nervous about? are they down there? It's interesting how American media outlets can focus on protests in foreign countries and give an objective, informative analysis of the situation. But when a real grassroots movement right here in the United States begins to grow, it's a media blackout. It took two full weeks before the corporate press figured out a way to talk about Occupy Wall Street in a way that didn't hurt their bottom line. They did this by polarizing what the movement is about, calling the protesters unruly animals for smashing windows and clashing with police, and instantly marginalizing and mocking the movement. But is this not the same thing we're seeing happen in Europe? But there is a silver lining to all of this, folks. People are catching on, and they're slowly starting to look away from the corporate media. The corporate press can keep pretending that they have a monopoly on information, but they don't. Because you see, we too have information. And we shouldn't be throwing Molotov cocktails just to get their attention.